Hey everyone, welcome back to another Seek and Destroy vlog. I think this is vlog number 53, assuming that I don't delete more and have to renumber them again uh, because of all the, you know, COPPA stuff and everything that's going on. So I think I've got the balance down and, and kind of weeded out some of the gray area stuff and stuck to our plan, you know, after you, my last video, if you watched it, episode 52, was uh, me talking about the new COPPA laws and, and or the not the new COPPA law, the COPPA law that's been around since like 98 when it was, uh, you know, they were trying to put it into effect and then 2000 when it finally passed. Um, but uh, yeah, we talked about all that in the last Seek and Destroy vlog that I did. And some of these vlogs you'll see, they'll change up. You know, I'll go outdoors more and everything like that. Today it's kind of rainy. Um, it's Thanksgiving. I'm filming this on Thanksgiving. And I wanted to do a Thanksgiving uh, Seek and Destroy vlog because I already recorded my uh, Venom vlog ones. And some of them are uploading now. So I have one video uploading now behind me. And then I'll have more uh, uploading later today. So I don't know if this will go up on Thanksgiving or not. But hopefully you did have a good Thanksgiving. And one of the things I wanted to talk about outside of Venom vlog, which obviously I'm very grateful to all of you who support that show who you know helped us get to this point um, everyone before who watched all the older videos that most of them I had to delete unfortunately uh, just out of you know fear of what these new you know what COPPA and FTC are doing to YouTube uh, so I'm sorry those are gone but I'll try to make it up to you by still making transformer content and other content just in a new way uh, I just got to think of how that's going to be and I want to see when the law goes into effect or when the law goes into effect it's already in effect but when the FTC rules start applying and everything starts happening on YouTube after January 1st, I kind of want to get a feel for what's going on, you know, kind of gauge what other content creators are doing and start thinking of ways to bring that content back to you guys in a new format if I can. So, uh, you know, so that will be coming. But I, I, you know, obviously I'm thankful to everyone who supports this channel. So I didn't want to just do a Venom vlog episode and be thankful for just the Venom vlog. Obviously I do other shows on here and Seek and Destroy vlog is kind of what we started. You know, this channel started, unfortunately the original first episode is long gone now, uh, but uh, but that's what we started on this channel was the Seek and Destroy vlog. And then I had to renumber them. Uh, so the new first episode is like my experience at Comic-Con when I played the Resident Evil 7, you know, VR demo and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, definitely go back and check some of those old episodes if you haven't watched them. They're a lot of fun and I appreciate all of you guys who do support the show and have been here for years it means a lot to me so I wanted to do a seek and destroy episode today uh, to celebrate Thanksgiving and say I'm thankful to all of you who have been here longer than the Venom vlog uh, because uh, that has meant a lot to me and without you we couldn't have got to the Venom vlog and without you we still wouldn't be nearing 2,000 subscribers so thank you very very much I do have a stack of comics here because in this episode we're gonna give away all of these digital codes that is my thank you to all of you who support this channel uh, we're gonna have digital codes pop up throughout the episode but the digital codes are going to be, and I'm not going to label them, they're going to be random, so, you know, grab a code or two if you want, try to save some for other people, try not to be too greedy, but they're going to pop up throughout the episode. We have everything that ties into this 2099 book that we're going to talk about today, which is just alpha number one. That's the only book I'm going to talk about today um, in detail. Uh, so there will be spoilers in it. So, you know, if you don't want spoilers, walk away now, but we're going to dive into that book here soon, and we're going to start by giving the digital code away for this one. So, boom. There's the digital code, uh, and then throughout the episode, like I said, we're going to get digital codes for Amazing Spider-Man 32, which kind of sets up this story, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 33, which uh, continues that setup, obviously, um, and Amazing Spider-Man 34, which ties, kind of starts tying directly into the events to an extent, uh, or at least explaining more of uh, Miguel's reason for being in the past. Uh, then also Fantastic Four number one, 2099. So that digital code will go out uh, at some point in this video. And the first two issues of Doctor Doom. I got the 2099 variant cover too. Uh, but this series, it doesn't really tie in so much. But because Doom is a big factor in Alpha, I wanted to include these two books. And this was recommended to me by Leland um, at, and someone else online. But Leland at House of Secrets rec recommended this. And someone else online recommended this too. Uh, and I'm sorry if I'm blanking on who that was. But uh, this is good. Like I liked it. Um, and I was that was the week where there was no Absolute Carnage books came out. And I was like... I'm going to try this Doom book, and I love Dr. Doom. You know I'm a big Fantastic Four fan, so I was like, this is actually pretty good. So I like the setup of it. So those codes will pop up throughout. Like I said, there's these are tie-in issues uh, for Amazing Spider-Man. These all kind of set up. Uh, Miguel O'Hara, the Spider-Man of the year 2099, has come back in time, and he's interacting with Peter Parker because of some new device that was invented that can foresee uh, the future in a way, and that, I guess, is ch caused some change in the year 2099 so you know miguel's coming back um to you know to deal with it i guess and he was sent back by doom 
and we're going to find out, you know, hopefully why in the main uh, 2099 book. And then Fantastic Four number, uh, Fantastic Four 2099, this one deals with a new Fantastic Four team being put together by Herbie, the little robot uh, that was created by the Fantastic Four, and he's going around sent by his uh, mother, uh, you know, quote unquote, who I guess is Sue Storm, Invisible Woman, and he, and she, you know, the robot's trying on her behalf to create a new Fantastic Four team. And it's, it's, well, it's rough. <laughs> it's a rough book. It starts off really hopeful. And of course, you're following a little robot. So you're like, oh, I love them. Um, and then it just gets really exponentially worse from there. Um, and then, yeah, the Doctor Doom book, which doesn't tie directly into the series, but it's just Doctor Doom has an ongoing series right now. And it's really good. And I think you should read it. So, all right. Now we're like 10 minutes in. Let's talk about 2099 Spider-Man, or Spider-Man, but 2099 Alpha, number one, which does feature Spider-Man in it. Um, but this is, and there's a lot of characters on here from the original 2099 universe, uh, some of which I don't know if we're going to get versions of in these one shots. I know we're going to get like a Ghost Rider and a Venom and, uh, you know, and a couple other characters. They're not doing an X-Men 2099, which is a bummer because I actually really liked the, the start of that book. And then even towards the end, had a couple good issues in there. Um, but I stuck with 2099 from the launch of Doom and Ravage and Punisher and Spider-Man 2099. All of those number ones came out pretty close together within like a month or so of each other. And uh, and I loved them. They had like the little silvery co covers and stuff. And um, each one had like a different color. I think like Ravage, I think was white and or Doom was silver or something like that. And, and Punisher was blue, maybe. And Spider-Man was red. I can't remember. There was like different. They had different colors. Um, but uh, those were the four initial books that started off this run. Uh, you know, Stan Lee wrote the uh, Ravage book and he wrote it for like eight issues and it dealt with like environmental things. And, and it kind of addressed those kind of issues. Uh, so it had like a, a statement, you know, in it, in, in it, in a way. Um, then the regular 2099 books like Spider-Man and Punisher and stuff, obviously Punisher dealt with crime and how that, how like corporations deal with it because he worked for a group called the Public Eye Police, which was owned by the Alchemex Corporation. Uh, they were like a branch of Alchemex and they were the police force in the future, kind of Judge Dredd style um, or, you know, or Judge Dredd style. I can't, <laughs> I'm misspeaking all over the place today. And uh, yeah, and so they kind of like enforce the law in the future and they have these like cool suits and everything like that um and they're called the public eye police so they're like a branch of the uh, alchemex there's another branch called the eco which gets mentioned in this book too so again all these little things that don't really uh get didn't get any love in the other youtubers videos and i was like ah oh, but that's the crux of this like if you're a fan of this if you read these books which maybe a lot of you don't exist out there that read these and know them like you know the way i know them um and even me i'm i'm still not i don't have like a, a encyclopedic knowledge of it but i do i have a lot of it in my head still um because this was cool stuff i mean it was the future of marvel and at one point they try to retcon it and say it was a potential future and there was like a marvel handbook that came out that said it was like the world was called earth 928 and not earth 616 but now like uh dan slot kind of retcon that in a way and said that the 2099 universe is the future of the Marvel universe, at least until, you know, uh, the year 2099 actually exists in our real world. Cause then at that point, I'm sure it's still going to be Peter Parker and everything. Uh, so I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but, uh, but for now, at least 80 years from now, that's when this is taking place. And Marvel was created 80 years ago. Um, so it's kind of like, this is the halfway point. And that's why they wanted to do this big event before the year ended. So um, I liked it. I think Nick Spencer did a really good job with this. Um, they mentioned a land in the beginning of this called the Ravage, which is also kind of a reference to the character Ravage. I don't remember there being a territory named the Ravage, uh, but what they're seeing, all this dialogue, uh, all these bubbles that are popping up, these words that are in this character's heads that they're hearing, are like classic Stan Lee lines of dialogue. Um, like, uh, you know, with great power comes great responsibility uh, to help those who distrust us if they knew of our existence, which is an X-Men line. Um, there is much good uh, we might do. There is a shouldn't have signed it, which I think is a reference to the um, uh, the uh, the Superhero Registration Act or whatever for Civil War. So there's like all these things of smash, obviously Hulk's you know famous saying. So there's all these great lines throughout the history of Marvel being said there are a lot of them being original Stan Lee stuff and then there's this moment where this little child sees the, the ha uh, hammer of Thor and just keeps hearing the word worthy 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 getting louder and louder and louder and as they reach for the the sword um you know you reveal that the the kid is a mutant and there's another eye growing out of them and these creatures have showed up to uh take you know to, to kill any survivors and so the child runs off leaving the hammer there so we don't get any of course it says 2009 alpha but it doesn't point out what year this is. I mean, other than you can assume maybe it, this is the past. Um, but at the same time, the Ravage does exist 
current day. So I'm going to guess that just all of this takes place in the year 2099, which I know if you followed the original 2099 books, you know that eventually in the last series they did called World of Tomorrow, it was like an eight issue series. It was supposed to go on longer, I think like 12 or 20 issues to, to wrap up the whole thing. And they were trying to establish Spider-Man saving the world with a imposter Captain America who like woke up out of the ice and uh, or maybe he was the real Captain America. There was an imposter. And I think the real one they found in the ice like he was refrozen somehow um, in like the year 2040 or something like that. And uh, and Spider-Man helps him out. And, uh, you know, that Captain America, Steve Rogers, picks up the Mjolnir hammer and help save the world and then passes the hammer to Spider-Man 2099 to be the, the the spider Thor or whatever of the future. And then they, they kind of outline the year 2099 to the year 3099 and show how the humanity gets saved from corporations. Cause that's what the big thing was. Like I said, Alchemex was this big company, Spider-Man, his alter ego is Miguel O'Hara. He works for that company. Uh, Tyler Stone kind of co-runs that company. And then later uh, an, an AI named Avatar, I think is the, the leader of that company. So there's a, so corporations have taken over in the future. And that's kind of what these heroes are fighting against. Punisher is kind of fighting against it in a way. He's fighting against crime too, because like our Punisher, his, you know, Jake Gallows, his family gets killed. Um, and so by a guy named Cronstone, who is Tyler Stone's son. And you find out that Cronstone is, uh, has a different mother than Miguel O'Hara. And Miguel O'Hara later gets revealed to be Tyler Stone's other son. So him and Cronstone are, you know, half brothers. And I think there's even another brother too, who becomes the Green Goblin of the future uh, that Miguel has. And Cronstone, like kind of the half brother who was abused by the, the house robot AI or whatever, um, he, because he was like born deformed in a way, uh, he was abused by this AI that didn't understand that he was a human. Um, so yeah, talk about dark stuff. It, the, the AI couldn't process that he was a human being as a child and it, it abused him. And so Kron went down a dark path, killed the Punisher's family, creating the Punisher, and then also became the Venom of the year 2099. So yeah, like I said, a lot of the stuff's in my head. I'm not an encyclopedia of it, but there's a lot of it in my head. So when I was reading this, I saw all these really great references. So I think this Ravage is not a a past scene. I think this might be the real Mjolnir hammer in current day in the Ravage, which is a territory where things are just lost and corporations don't go near it because of it's desolate and everything and, and things have gone bad there. Then it cuts to Brooklyn where there's another hammer. Uh, these, This one being a, a, a replica hammer, uh, I think, uh, because this is being wielded by someone who's probably not worthy of uh, lifting Mjolnir. And so these are the Thorites or, or members of the Church of Thor, which in the original comic, Jake Gallows, uh, the Punisher of 2099, he was, uh, like I said, a public eye police officer that worked for Alchemex, but he was also a member of the Church of Thor. And there was this reverend who ends up becoming the new Thor, and he creates a cult of every, all these people that worship the gods, like Thor, Loki, Heimdall, you know, um, Hela, and they worship them. And there was a storyline called Follow the Hammer where that reverend becomes like the, the Thor in the future by corrupting the power and, and, and corrupting Mjolnir and, and you know, whatever, uh, using technology to kind of get around, uh, you know, the lifting it and stuff and creates a group of like Thorite knockoffs uh, of all these people who like, you know, fight back against uh, everyone who's resisting the corporations and stuff. And so uh, so that was kind of a neat story, Follow the Hammer. And so I think these are just those people uh, you know, fighting back against the public eye police. And as we're going to learn, this public eye guy who gets hit right there with the hammer, and he says shock. I love that that's one of the first words spoken in the future is just shock, you know, because that's like their way of saying like F, you know, the F word. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so he gets hit pretty hard and he's about to die and someone saves him, a guy named Hector, one of his partners. Uh, and you find out that this guy's name is Jake. So I'm guessing this is Jake Gallows, who was the original Punisher of the year 2099. When Marvel did reboots of 2099, like Marvel Knights, 2099 was like the five-year anniversary. Robert Kirkman wrote a lot of that, and they did like a new Punisher, and they did like the Inhumans 2099. Um, they Those were, I didn't like any of those books. <laughs> I actually, I bought them all when they came out. And then I gave them away pretty soon after. I was like, I don't want to own these. It's a reboot. And then in 2009, I think nine, they did a, a book called Time Storm where they tried to reboot the 2099 universe. And then there was like Spider-Man showed up in Exiles for, for a while and became a member of their team um, at the end of the 2099 universe, right before it became 2100 or something. And there was like all these things. And it's like, and I know a lot of people are like, How, this is the longest year in comic book history. How could there just, it, that whole 2099 year, how could it never get to the year 2100? And I think that's what they're kind of answering here because it seems like this is yet another reboot, but 
one that is aware of the previous timeline, unlike all the other reboots. So like, almost like the new Star Trek that J.J. Abrams did, there's a character like Spock that knows there's that this is a different timeline, and that's Doom in this one. Doom knows, along with another being that we're going to meet, he knows this is a new timeline because he helped create it somehow. So that's what we're going to find out is how he manipulated something either in the past um, or something currently to mind wipe all of these heroes from the future from fighting back against the corporations and mind wiped them all and brought them back to uh, something simple before they become the destined heroes they're supposed to become or vigilantes and so on. So yeah, so they find out like, look, this wannabe Thor gets killed or this person gets killed and the Thor hammers hung around them to help add the weight to, you know, to snap in their neck, I guess. So yeah, uh, pretty, pretty dark. So Jake, I think this Jake is Jake Gallows, uh, who is the Punisher, the original Punisher. And yeah, this big spread here. Normally, I, I wish they would do more something more creative than just the the font. Um, I think that's like something that Hickman kind of brought in. And I'm just like, ah, draw images. Like, I want to see an image here. Like, that would be awesome. Uh, but Nick Spencer is the writer of this series. Victor Bogdanovich is the artist. Marte, uh, Marte Gra uh, Gracia is a colorist. And uh, VC's Joe Caramagna is the letterer. And they got a great team on here. And Ryan Stegman, a lot of people uh, um, did Arthur Adams, did variant covers to it. And Nick Lowe and Darren Shaw, uh, Shan are the editors. And Kathleen Wisniewski is the assistant editor. And I, I know Nick Lowe, and I, and I, but I, I think I recognize the other names. But uh, so far, the continuity between this and the Fantastic Four book are good. Um, between this and the Spider-Man tie-ins, not yet. I'm still waiting to see how they, they connect. Uh, but uh, hopefully we'll find that out, you know, coming up soon. So yeah, we're in the future with Nuevo uh, York. So New York, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, look at the designs. Corporations have completely taken over. At least the Statue of Liberty is still there, which is good. Um, and uh, yeah, just a beautiful uh, image there by Victor B uh, Bogdanovich, because just drawing cityscapes isn't, you know, some artists are like, yeah, I'm good at people. I'm good at faces. I'm, you know, and then they're like, oh, draw buildings and cars, you know, and they're like, oh, okay. So I don't, I, but, but Victor's done great work at DC for years and uh, Pat Gleason, who is doing the Spider-Man tie-ins also worked at DC for years. So it's, it's great to see them, you know, cut their teeth on some characters that they probably draw on commission artwork, but not, you know, professionally before. So it's nice to see their stuff. And I think Victor and, and Pat may have done some things uh, professionally uh, or not. I can't remember, but, uh, but seeing them back here, back in the Marvel universe, uh, doing stuff for these characters is really neat. And, and then doing a series like this is really neat. And I can't wait to see where they go next. Cause I love both their art styles. Um, so then we cut to Alchemex, which is the company, like I said, who kind of runs a lot of things. And Miguel is talking to Tyler and the fact that they're talking and that they're friendly to each other ish uh, shows that this is pretty early on this is you know like uh, before he becomes the Spider-Man obviously but again that's because Doom has done something he has and I haven't seen other YouTubers mention this part either which I'm like this is like, it's like clearly in the book that Doom is in control of this universe and he has rewritten history and so that's what he's seeing he's what so these events these previews into these people's lives that he's seeing um he's checking in on them he's like these are the heroes that kind of fought back you know back when the world you know was the way it was the 2099 world before and he's like so i want to keep an eye on them to make sure that they don't rise up again and if they start to we got to rewrite some things again and you know and put them back to not knowing who they are and not leading them to their destiny so i thought that was you know that's kind of what they're the world they're building here the story they're telling so miguel has figured something out he's cracked some kind of genetic uh, you know code that is going to help them you know um create potentially super soldiers stuff like that in the original comic i think miguel had a, a virus in him called the rapture and that was like some kind of weird a uh, virus that was like hurting him and through Tyler Stone, I think, got an injection. And that, with the virus, is ended up what leading him to becoming Spider-Man of the year 2099. He got some spider powers, but not all of them. He couldn't stick to walls. So it created a suit that had these little, like, adamantium, like, blades on the fingertips so he could scratch people, but also so he can cling to buildings and use his spider strength to pull himself up buildings. So he couldn't, he didn't have all of Peter Parker's powers, but he had some of them, which is pretty cool. Um... So, uh, so yeah, so then he talks about some experiment that went wrong uh, called the Spider-Man Project. And uh, it like, you know, it was like a humanoid spider that got mutated, almost like man spider. And it grabs Miguel 
and it, it like coughs up or bleeds into his face and mouth, uh, which I guess is going to infect Miguel into becoming something. It looks like the spider dropped dead on top of him, possibly. So yeah, so I don't know. We'll we'll see where that goes. I'm I'm kind of curious because remember this is all rewritten history now uh, with Doom watching it happen, knowing that it's rewritten history. Uh, because they talk about Conan the Barbarian, who was not in the original 2099 universe, uh, but now is coming in. And it looks like he has like little like uh, trinkets on his neck, uh, which could... Uh, someone, I think, in their YouTube video said they might be Tony Stark fingers. I think Cape Joel or someone did um, in their like, uh, podcast episode. I guess it could be little Iron Man fingers, which is neat, because in the future, in 2099, the Stark company is not called Stark Enterprises. It's called the Stark Fujikawa uh, company or something like that. So he had like merged with a, a Japanese businessman and, uh, and they like, you know, that's their company now. So it's like Stark Fujikawa is the name of it. Uh, but him having little fingers of iron, different Iron Man suits. That's interesting. If that's true, <laughs> uh, I would like to see where, what happens there. So Conan, I don't have much to say about because obviously, you know, that's going to flesh out in the book that just came out this week, which is Conan 2099 written by Jerry Duggan. Uh, so I'm curious to go see that and read that. I haven't picked that up yet or the Punisher book that came out this week, but I'll get them, you know, my next paycheck for sure. And uh, maybe we'll talk about it in a future episode at some point. But uh, I, I kind of don't want to. I want to just kind of set this up for you guys, talk about this issue in depth, try to sell you on this one and uh, and get you to go get it and then pick all the one shots up yourself and then tell me what you think of it. Maybe we'll do a, another Seek and Destroy after the whole event's over and we'll kind of gloss over everything that happens. Um, so we cut to Doom, and Doom, this is a big spoiler here, Doom has a uh, Watcher, not just any Watcher, he says Watu, uh, and that's weird that it would be Watu, because I think Watu died in current Marvel continuity, but, I mean, he could come back, it's like, everyone dies in Marvel continuity, and I think, like, Nick Fury's on the dark side of the moon as, like, an invisible being that has to, like, watch stuff now, too, he's like a Watcher in a way, um, replacing Watu or something, I can't remember, but... Uh, they haven't really done much with that. So to me, I'm just like, eh, they'll do a cosmic event coming up and I bet you Watcher will return in it and Watu will get like, you know, reformed because this kind of has to, you know, happen. Like Watu has to be reborn because they have established now that the 2099 universe is the, the, the future of Marvel. The only thing is, is because Doom is rewriting things, I think he's constantly flowing in and out of the multiverse. And uh, because he's looking at for, uh, looking for potentialities of things that could change, using the Watcher's eyes to tell him what's changing or what could be a threat, he keeps rewriting it. So for all I know, he has now put the 2099 universe outside of the, the strict continuity of, con you know, of connecting to the 616 universe. Through his actions, he could have put it in a bubble outside, and only when the bubble gets burst can it go back into its place. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. That's just a theory of mine. Uh, but he talks about like how the world is and stuff. And they mention the ECO in here. Like I said, there's a lot of references that I didn't see other YouTubers mention. Not that they're it's a big big deal, but it just shows that okay, you know, like you know, the people who claim to be huge comic book fans, it's like all right, we all have our blind spots. There's a bunch of blind spots I have. But say that's a blind spot before you review something, because when you just talk about it like you know what you're talking about and you miss all these things, it, it you're not informing your audience. And that's what you should be doing as a YouTuber, not just reviewing something and giving your thoughts, but informing them on stuff as well the best you can. Of course, we're not all going to get it right. I probably made some mistakes in this video already, but you still try your best. Um, but yeah, they mentioned the ECO, which like I said is a branch of the Alchemex company, as are the public eye. Um, and then they talk about the Raiders, like, um, you know, uh, the, although it's a, diff a slightly different form of them. But uh, originally Tyler Stone created this Raider initiative in like Doom number one or in Spider-Man number one, I think, too. Uh, 2099 number one, I mean. Um, I think back then they, they appeared as early as the first issues. And the Raider Corporation, the Raider group, was like this initiative of like, you know, one percenters uh, working for these companies. That would uh, you know keep an eye out for the company's best interests, and eventually they hire an assassin named Venture, who is a a guy who's like a like a you know, bounty hunter um, that Tyler Stone and the Raiders you know uh, Raider group uh, hire to take down Spider Man, um, and uh, and it, it turns out Venture shows up in this book, but now as a female. So again, history has been rewritten. So and and Doom knows it's been rewritten, and when he sees some of these characters, he's like, yeah, I'm not too worried about them, like, who cares, like, you know, they're not going to cause any problems, uh, he's like, the problem happened years ago with the, the Lost Age, you know, the heroes turned on each other, and this kind of looks a little Civil War-ish, but not too, because I don't think Captain Marvel was on Captain America's side 
um, or or Black Panther. I think Black Panther was on Iron Man's side. So when I'm looking at some of these battles and some of these characters, like the Yellow Jacket's there. And um, so I'm like, all right, this is kind of Civil War-ish, but it's not Civil War 2-ish either. So is it Civil War 3? Are they going to do a Civil War 3? So but he just talked about some event that uh, where the heroes caused a massive problem like they like they tend to do they 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 inspire escalation in a way uh their very presence as vision says in the movies uh uh chat you know brings challenge it makes people want to challenge them because of the power they all have um and some people just don't want to sit by villains or heroes want to sit by and watch these guys you know be in control or, or, or be the police of our universe they they're like oh we don't i don't trust these guys i don't know them i don't know iron man or he's made too many mistakes to trust him or whatever you know it's like so it's so something big happened and it it kind of messed up time so much so that doom felt the need to step in and rewrite history and have a watcher with them and use that watcher to you know foresee any threats that might change the history that he's rewriting currently um so that's that's kind of what's going on and it's really neat and i love this page these pages with uh, in transverse city with uh zero cochran um kenshiro is his name uh, kenshiro cochran uh he's also known by zero he becomes the ghost rider of the year 2099 and transverse city is this really cool city that's basically i mean yeah there are buildings there and there's a but for the most part transverse city is just a a, a series of roads and uh and you and like the, these are my more for like police and maybe like some living quarters and stuff but for the most part everyone lives in their cars and as long as as long, if they committed a crime and as long as they're driving on the road and they don't stop then they can't be um charged for any crimes that they do so sometimes people are on the road and they're like dismantling other cars and they help wreck them or kill people shoot someone shoot another driver as long as they stay moving the police the rules are that the police can't arrest them as long as it happens on the road they can't arrest them so it's this long autobahn style road that ha but it has twists and turns and it goes up and down and all around the city and uh and so zero cochran is living on this road and he catches up with a guy who outran the police and he's like hey what are you outrunning him for and he's like well i had i wrote a play and my partner who you know was helping me make the play turns out he stole my work and i didn't want to hurt him but i ended up you know going too far and i killed him and so now i'm on the run and so zero's like okay so you're kind of a bad guy so let's uh, you know like he's like but i'll help you out as long as uh, your, your car's a little busted let me fix that for you i got a girl that will come over do it and she drives over and she sticks out uh, her side of her van and she's trying to fix the car and he's like all right it'll be 300 credits and he's like what that's a lot of money he's like come on dude we're fixing your car so you can outrun the police and the guy's like fine whatever just fix it and he taps his you know debit card or whatever and uh, or, or pay card or whatever it is and uh, he sees that more than 300 comes out all of his money comes out actually and zero is like yeah well you, you, you do, they don't specifically say it's zero but he's definitely drawn and he looks a lot like the original drawings of zero uh, by ashley wood so i'm gonna say it's zero uh, definitely zero because there's also a mention of ghost rider right after this so um he does that he he screws the guy over the woman who's fixing the car actually takes car parts off so they can use it for other things that they're going to do and then the guy pulls over the road crashes uh, lives and he gets arrested by the cops and so doom's like why do i care about a petty thief like why are you making me watch him and the watcher's like look closer you know victor like look closer at who this person may actually be and you get a little sense of the ghost rider there you get a little glimpse of him so uh so yeah these are again doom didn't know everyone in the in the 2099 universe he knew most of them especially when he became president and they changed the titles to 2099 ad after doom and he was president of you know the world in a way uh which is something doom's always wanted uh but for him to go back and rewrite even that uh to be this quiet ruler somewhere uh is interesting something bad must have really happened in the past that sent ripple effects because the thing about the 2099 universe is that it's not set in stone as as we've re revealed it is connected to the 2019 timeline to the 616 universe it's connected there but every time something major happens there it does change miguel's time and this time he actually knows that the, the everything's changed and so that's why he's going back to stop it and he was sent by doom so even doom is like all right i guess this plan of rewriting things isn't going to work out for very long for doom because otherwise why would he send miguel back to you know be a backup plan or be the main plan to change everything again so that's what i'm loving about this book i mean for for a, like a, a setup book 
there's a lot here, especially if you're a fan of the 2099 universe and you know it really well. Like, there's a lot here to digest. Um, and then, again, like I said, I mentioned the character Venture, who was hired by the Raiders. So the Raiders are, there's, like, a bar full of Raiders. So they're not, like, corporate men in this world. It looks like they're just, like, a bunch of, like, uh, scoundrels. And uh, Herbie shows up, and he's like, hey, I'm looking for my mother's friends. Please help me. Oh, I'm a cute robot. Please help me. And they're like, let's cut them open. I haven't seen a, a model like this in a long time. Uh, maybe he'll have some parts we can use and, and scout, you know, as, as, uh, scavenge. And, and and sell out and stuff like that and uh and then that's when venture shows up and so like i said venture is a female in this rewritten timeline and she decides to help herbie and uh on his mission and she's like all right i'll join you for your mission so to continue what happens to them you got to pick up fantastic four 2099 number one and you find out the full story of what happens with herbie venture and the new team of fantastic four members that they put together that i'm not going to obviously spoil here because this is the only book i'm spoiling and i'm going through beat for beat uh because like i said i just saw a lot of youtubers and i was like i feel like this could more information could have been said that's why this is a long episode because there's so much here to unpack and unwind um, so yeah, so then at the end of the book, it's Doom, you know, talking to Watu, uh, the Watcher, asking him, you know, like, why are you showing me this stuff? Like, Herbie's never going to succeed in its mission, so what's going on? And he's like, well, it's not just what I see, Victor, but it's also what I hear. And he goes, I hear metal on metal. I hear forging. And he goes, I hear Doom. And uh, then you see, like, much like Doom's origin, when he forged his first original armor, um, he's got his face bandaged up and everything like that. And he's forging, you know, his his plate, his chest plate, his mask and everything. And uh, actually, this doom calls him an imposter. He says, another imposter, I'll send the kingpin to deal with it. And he goes, or a possibility, it could just be your past catching up to you finally. So uh, that's why I think, you know, doom here sends Miguel back is to prevent whatever his past self is about to, you know, um, unleash or uh, or do now that uh, time is changing because when you change stuff sometimes in the future the ripple effects could go outwards and even affect some things in the past as we learned in like s s events like flashpoint and stuff um so i don't know if that still counts for marvel continuity obviously but um and i don't know these are just some of these are just theories of mine so uh watu mentions you know like i think this is the end for you, Victor. All the things you've been rewriting, all the things you've been doing, I think it. We, you put a Band-Aid on a problem and you kept putting Band-Aids on and you kept you know, trying to change out the Band-Aids. Sometimes you just left the original Band-Aid and just put another Band-Aid over it, but everything you're doing, it's not actually fixing the problem. And uh, now things are, are, are happening that uh, neither of us could have foreseen. So uh, Doom doesn't like that and he like electrocutes, you know, Watu and he's like, he's like, just remember, I don't need your tongue. Uh, I just need your eyes. And I'm like, well, you kind of need his tongue because you can't really see well i guess watu is showing him because he's hooked up to a machine so doom can see through his eyes i guess uh but yeah he was like i don't need your tongue and i'm like yeah but th th you, these conversations are great for exposition so please keep his tongue in his mouth <laughs> but at the end of the book um it, sh it shows a reveal you know it's like it's all right here's all the characters we talked about conan that was the barbarian you saw so that's conan 2099 um then you know this uh kenshiro uh, cochran they're sh given away that it's ghost rider 2099 and like i said he's drawn like zero so i'm like okay so it's zero uh jake gallows the original punisher punisher 2099 although i think in this new book i don't know if it's jake gallows i haven't read issue one yet so i don't know but they do refer to him as jake at the beginning so i'm guessing it's jake gallows um then obviously herbie's adventure continues in uh, Fantastic Four 2099 and Miguel's adventure, because at the end of his story, he asks Lila, he's like, uh, I need you to look up a term for me. And I'm guessing that is gonna lead him to coming face to face with Dr. Doom. And then that'll lead him to being sent in the past by Doom from the future uh, to, uh, you know, to do, right some wrong in the past uh, and, and interact with Peter Parker for some reason. So, uh, so yeah, that'll continue in the Spider-Man one shot as well. So I dug this. I really did. As a longtime fan of the 2099 world, as someone who stuck with it all the way to the end, who watched it get canceled, watched, I think there was like writers and people that worked on the book, editors got like fired. And in like unison, some of the other writers uh, like decided to quit. They were like, you know what? If that person's fired off this book because of low sales, then we're all quit and like two or three other people quit and it pretty much killed the the series like it was like there was a lot of drama behind the scenes um but what i liked was the initial start of it how some of these books like ravage was like this environmental book and it kind of raised the, like for me as you know in 1992 when that came out i was 10 years old and it opened my eyes to things like that you know like just oh okay and then corporations like being these big conglomerates that in the future will take over and just leave nothing for the the little man and uh and you know and the people at the bottom 
And so these heroes are like uprisers in a way. And I love that because that was kind of my first exposure to things like that. And so this series meant a lot to me as a kid. And I'm glad I, I can remember big pockets of it. And I have full collections in my collection. I have like all the Doom books I love. It started off with him just being like, a, 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 we, we weren't sure. Was he was he Dr. Doom? What, what was he? Was he a Doom bot that, you know, became sentient? What was going on? Was he some imposter, some descendant? And they revealed later on that he was actually Dr. Doom from our timeline, still in the future, because there can be only one Doom, right? And uh, so that, I, that reveal, I remember being so amazing. The X-Men stuff, because in this one, they mentioned right at the beginning, this little thing that I also didn't see other YouTubers mention, which was uh, the reason Jake is down here in this area in Brooklyn is because he heard that some ECO guy was running an experiment on a woman's son who is infected with a, a virus called Skullfire. And I was like, that's awesome because Skullfire was a member of the X-Men of the 2099 uh, series. And he was like the newest member that gets signed up right at the beginning. He had some power where his face, like he became transparent, almost like blight from uh, Batman Beyond, because uh, uh, and this was obviously way before Batman Beyond, or like Phosphorus Man or something like that. You could see through him and see like a green skull and his hands like lit up and he could shoot like green energy blasts that were like radioactive. And uh, he, his, when his powers manifested, I think he killed someone he loved as his powers manifested. And ever since then, he's been on the run. I think he tried to like kill himself a couple times. There's like a, a dark story with him. And he ended up uh, coming across Cerebra, who introduced him to the X-Men 2099. And he found a new purpose being on the team and trying to be a hero. And so I was like, wow, did they just mention Skullfire being like a young man whose powers are just now manifesting and he's with his mom? I think in the original comic, his girlfriend maybe got affected when he became Skullfire for the first time, uh, but maybe in this one, like the rewritten history. So it looks like Doom, the more he tries to change, the more things are still manifesting. Uh, you know, he can't, as, as great as Doom is, as powerful as he is, as, even after he was a god in Secret Wars and he kind of compartmentalized all the different universes um he still you know over overlooked a lot of things because he thought they were beneath him and this book is doing that too where he's just like yeah i don't care about a thief and the, you know watu's like yeah but that thief is going to be ghost rider so you better really pay attention to this thief and deal with him now and, and doom's like eh, i'm not too worried about it um and so yeah there's a lot, a lot of great stuff and we'll talk about ghost rider 2099 uh because in my ghost rider series uh, i'm going to go through that collection i have a lot of those i don't have every issue but i have a lot of them uh but that book is was really fun i really like that by lynn kaminsky and i think there was another writer took over later and ashley wood that was my first exposure to ashley wood so um yeah i love that series it was really really fun chris piccolo i think was the original artist on ghost rider 2099 um so yeah and that's why kenshiro here when i looked at his art i was like he looks a lot like the Chris Piccolo slash Ashley Wood character. And then I was like, all right, yeah, it's probably Kenshiro. Uh, so that's great. So I'm, I'm, I love, like Nick Spencer really did a lot of homework. He must really love the 2099 universe. And maybe Nick Lowe, the editor, and everyone else, all the other editors that worked on this, maybe they all pitched in concepts and ideas. But this is riddled with Easter eggs and, and little love letters, like little secret love letters to that original series. And, uh, and I think it's way more clever than I think a lot of YouTubers are giving it credit for. And that's why I wanted to make this really long video where I discuss it and talk about it because I think it's worth your money. Like I think personally it's worth $4.99, uh, especially if you grew up reading the $20.99 stuff. Even if you just have like an insulary knowledge of some of that stuff and you won't get all the Easter eggs, that's what my video is here for. So hopefully that gets you to appreciate it more as you're reading it. And uh, and that's why I loved it. Not just for the kind of fan service -y Easter eggs, but because I like the setup here. Like Doom is rewriting history. He has a watcher, you know, chained up. I mean, that's so creepy and dark and awesome at the same time. And I love that that's part of his plan and that there's other imposters have shown up claiming they were dooms and he's dispatched to them or rewritten history again and because he's causing so many problems in the future it's now having ripple effects to the point where he has to send someone like spider-man from the future to the past to undo something there so that he can continue to do whatever he's doing in the future so it's like yeah he's causing all kind of problems i mean that's what it always is right whenever villains who want power get more of it they just want more and more and then they're ignoring all the effects that that power is having uh, on on time and space and, and the universe so uh, i'm digging this i think it's really really cool i think it's worth your money and time and i got the fantastic four tie-in so far and the spider-man ones uh but i don't have the punisher or conan ones that came out this week and i think uh there's two more that come out next week like a spider-man issue and something else so next week when i get paid i'll pick up all the other tie-ins and like i said when this ends when issue omega comes out 
um, maybe we'll do a video where we go through the entire series like after this so we'll go through all the one shots real briefly i'll try to keep those brief and then we'll dive deep into like omega and so you'll see that probably coming up on the channel sometime in january when the event's you know long over so uh, let me know what you think of all this if there's anything i missed any of the easter eggs that i did miss in this or any references i missed feel free to you know say it down below i think i got most of them though i mean this was though full of those and i had to go through and i was like ECO, I was like, I remember that being something connected. And then I went and looked it up and I go, oh yeah, that's right. The ECO was a, you know, a branch of Alchemex. And the Raiders was like this, I remember them from issue one, where they were like these one percenter guys sitting around a table trying to figure out the best interests for these companies. And I was like, man, this, there's so much in here on that level. But at the same time, I feel, I feel really you know, intrigued and compelled uh, to keep reading because I like the idea of Doom getting in, in way over his head and being so arrogant that he won't admit it. And even Watu says that about him. He's like, your arrogance is, are, are, is that's why we're here, Victor. So, uh, you, or he keeps calling him Doom. He doesn't call him Victor, but he's like, he's like your arrogance are why we're here. So I'm curious to see if this is Doom. You know, um, I'm guessing it is uh, because that, you know, that that fits the character in a lot of ways. But uh, I liked Doom 2099. I, he was kind of an anti-hero in a way, uh, but uh, but obviously still Dr. Doom. Uh, so there was definitely a dark side to him and, a, and a, a side that wanted to rule all. And he eventually does when he becomes president. So it's it's great. I mean, uh, this world is so fun. And it, like I said, it opened up my eyes to a lot of real world things like corporations taking over and environmental things uh, that Stan was like whipping in. And that's why when people say, oh, there was never political messages in comics, you know, before I'm like, I don't know. I, I mean, 2099 was, it had a lot of that in there and, uh, and it showed sometimes both sides of things and you would get to see the point of views of some characters. Like granted, some of the corporate guys were mostly evil, but there was some good that came out of it too. So it was like, I don't know. I, I always liked it and I liked that world a lot. So I'm glad Marvel, thank you for revisiting it. Nick Spencer, Nick Lowe, everyone who's working on this, Bogdanovich, all the writers, artists, Pat Gleason, and everyone who's coming in, Jerry Duggan, like, and everyone, everyone who's working on this, like, you knocked it out of the park with this one. And I really do like the Fantastic Four one too. So I'm, I can't wait to read the rest. So I will have more videos on this coming up probably in January when the event's over. Let me know what you think down below of this and everything I talked about here today. Do you have a favorite 2099 character, moment, anything it is, let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Happy Thanksgiving. I really appreciate you being here and I'll see you next time. Peace.